Ah, well. It's about that time, little babies. When Steam puts out their Steam survey, and then the console fanboys come out, jerking off wildly into the sunset, screaming, Ha! Huh, get wrecked! Xbox One X is more powerful than 99% of all PCs! And then they wonder why PC gamers fight back or fire back. We're about to delve into it. By the way, I'm not taking credit for finding this video because it wasn't on my radar. Someone on my subscriber base sent it to me. And frankly, you know, I kind of don't give a dog's dick in the sense of like, I only point out information that's true. Like when stuff comes out and shows a different narrative than what companies push in our face. You know, when companies sit there and go, oh, this is what the console does, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the fans sit there and tout it from the heavens because their identity is tied so strongly into the choice of their system. And I find an article that sort of reinstates the Xbox One X's uncompromised 4K is actually very compromised and uses checkerboard rendering like the PS4 Pro. That's not a narrative people want to see or hear. And then people get mad at me. I have no brand loyalty. Except I will say PC gaming is better than console gaming. I know. I've gamed on consoles all my life and I've recently gotten on PCs and frankly the difference is night and fucking day. I don't care how you slice it. Let's get into this. The Steam survey just released showcasing what PC gamers are gaming on. This kind of information is valuable because PC gamers can no longer lie when comparing their rigs to the Xbox One X. PC gamers can no longer lie when comparing their rigs to the Xbox One X. Hmm. Now, odds are, if you're seeing angry PC gamer quotes into a comment section, I don't think it's someone with a really beefy PC, because 90% of the time, people with really beefy PCs, such as myself, that well, old used to be beefy, I can't get myself a 980 Ti SLI, thanks a lot Bitminers. Anyway, uh, people with beefy rigs don't really go on other YouTube channels to yell at people, like Crap Gamer for instance, alright? he tells nothing but lies <laughs> and sugarcoat shit out the ass and I don't even comment on PC gamers videos he could say the most wild ridiculous shit and I don't comment his videos because there's no point in doing so so odds are you're dealing with 90% trolls 98% trolls odds are so who gives a rat's ass it's kind of like Xbox fans the ones that care to go on my videos to yell at me are trolls with no life really so, I don't know what the fuck to make of this. Ooh, we got you now, PC gamers. You can no longer lie. And probably, they're not even fucking adults. It's probably little kids. It's probably like 16 year olds. What are you gonna do? Go to their house and yell at them, dude? Xbox One X may be promoted as a 4K gaming console, but not every game running on the X will be in 4K. That's strictly up to developers, and no matter how much extra horsepower is under the plastic hood, some choices may be made to prioritize things over native 4K. I'm pretty sure that uh, 4K60 will only happen in uh, racing games. Maybe first party exclusives, but maybe at best. I really don't see with that CPU, I don't think it can handle the fucking information. I'm sorry. When an iPhone has a better CPU than a gaming console, one should worry. But, you know, I should leave this up to a guy like Rags, because Rags could sit there, he'll take it apart, he'll actually do it eloquently. Me, I could, I could be verbally dexterous if I so choose, but I much prefer talking to you like I'm talking to somebody in a room with me. So fuck this. Ooh, I want breakfast. Or 60 FPS. The difference between a closed console box and a widely varied PC configuration is that PC gamers get the choice of how to run their games. And the beauty of PC is the freedom to do what the fuck you choose. Not only do we get the boon of visual fidelity, we can either crank it up or draw it back for faster frames, or we want more immersive looking visuals, whatever the choice may be. On top of that, with the PC, there's textures, reshades, mods, E and Bs, whatever you want, we've got it, baby. You want to be Adam Jansen in fucking GTA 5 while your cat meows annoyingly in your fucking microphone? Well, baby, it's your choice. And if you don't get your furry ass out of here, motherfucker, I'll change you out of my room. He's so abusive. But anyway, the boon is with PC gaming, we also have the freedom to take our game and alter it. To be more fun, to be more interesting, and I think that's a big selling point. 
Uh, if you like being a rat in a maze, you can stick to consoles, though. Also, another thing that he's probably going to get into is not all PC gamers have PC rigs that can compete with consoles. Let's see. But that doesn't mean that PC gamers all have gaming rigs that will beat the performance of the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. In fact, I'm going to show you that a large majority of PC gamers, when comparing price to performance, may be on par with the 2013 PS4 and Xbox One. Because you get much more for $500 on the Xbox One X than you do for a $500 PC. I think one of the other points I just noticed that he totally missed when making his PlayStation analogy that some people have a computer that's on par for PlayStation 3, blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing, though. Those people that have a PC that's on par for PlayStation 3 can play games that are out on the PlayStation 4. If you have a PlayStation 3, you can't put a PlayStation 4 disc in it and make it play a PS4 game. I think that's something to be noted. The same can be said of the Xbox 360. If you didn't buy the Xbox One, then you damn sure can't put an Xbox One disc in your Xbox 360. So the point you made here, once again, kind of, okay, yeah, they're not as powerful, I guess, those few people, or many, I should say. Their PC gives them the freedom to still play the games that they would be restricted from playing if they had been stuck to playing on a PS3 or Xbox One. I mean, or an Xbox 360. So, I guess good point, but it also shoots you in the foot. I think the thing that you just displayed here is another level of freedom on the PC. Whereas, too, if you were on a console, you'd be locked behind a next-generation paywall. Because I have news for you. The first PC I ever built, I gave it to my mother. And uh, that thing can still play older games. And I could play Deus, Deus Ex Human Resolution, just like you, on that old PC without having to buy a new graphics card if I so didn't choose. Once again, it's more power to the people, really. The Steam survey is only a vertical slice of whomever chose to do the survey, but the honesty that comes from the survey leaves little room in the imagination for lies, sugarcoating, and bragging. Steam gathers this information by detecting hardware and performance. Well, let's, uh... I know I'm going to have to reiterate this later because I'm sure he didn't bother to think about it. Right now, he's most likely pushing a narrative. He's pushing, he's going to push a story that supports the superiority of Xbox One X, the price to performance, and how this is great and it's better than most gaming rigs. And this will get people to subscribe to him, mainly Xbox console fans. They're fiercely loyal, honestly. Like the Xbox the like, console community is as loyal as like fucking gay kids for Lady Gaga, dude. Sale at midnight. Diehards in Denver and Des Moines brave freezing temperatures and snow to get the gaming console. Earlier. People started lining up on Wednesday in New York. If you go camping, it's going to be 36 hours. And for this, you get something you're never going to get except every 10 years. I have to interject here. Was that not the funniest shit ever? That guy going, you only get this once every 10 years. That poor piece of shit. I bet when they announced the Xbox Scorpio, he was like, fuck. Poor bastard. Like, really, that, I bet that burned his fucking ass. Once every 10 years, huh, bro? Well, it's been four. What happened? It's actually been eight years since Xbox unveiled the Xbox 360. It's only been a week since Sony debuted their latest competitor, the PlayStation 4. I like Xbox better. I don't... My mom tried to talk me into the PlayStation 4 and I'm like, no. At $499, the Xbox One goes for a full $100 more than the PS4. As much shit as Crack Gamer has said that has been refuted, proven wrong, and out, out, all out lies, he still has a fan base. Shit, I should be doing console gaming stuff to get people to follow me. But let's somewhat be in the realm of keeping remotely professional here. ADD much Gundam. Out of the 100 million or more PC gamers, you have to realize that a large portion of them are all around the motherfucking world, and including in areas you wouldn't assume, like third world countries. Now, the reason why these PCs aren't up to snuff is either, you know, A, they just have it to play CSGO or Team Fortress 2. Makes logical sense. A lot of people also buy... PCs with gaming functions that are fucking laptops, <laughs> you know, 
that they got from Best Buy, and the Best Buy guy sits there and tells these people, hey, you know, <laughs> this is great for you. It's also got gaming. It's got a GT730 in it. And a person who doesn't know will go, oh, sweet, that sounds, this is a high-powered gaming rig. Considering if I go on my local Craigslist, which I'm not going to do right now, I was doing it yesterday for laughs, there were people selling high-powered gaming rigs in quotation marks, and the fucking thing had a GTX 750 Ti in it. And this dude's asking for like $1,500. There's so many people who are ill-informed that they get sold these pre-builds and they don't even know they're getting ripped off. So that's one reason. Two, which I fell away from my original point anyway, please forgive me, is the fact that there's a lot of third world countries. There's a lot of people in places like fucking Argentina. There's people in Brazil, etc. Romania, uh, Turkey. India, blah, 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 that have gaming PCs, but since their economy is so weak versus the American dollar or the euro, etc., a, a fucking 760 for them is still like $300. A GTX 760, you go on eBay right now, now you can get a 760 for $60. I know, because I did it. Also, believe it or not, in some countries, it's actually more feasible for them to build a PC because a fucking Xbox One is over a thousand dollars in fucking Brazil. That's why there's so many people with these small, tiny, cheap rigs. Because they, they can't afford a console. It's just so insanely priced. This is what a lot of these guys who push these narratives do not know or care to research or don't even bother to tell you. Because it would give you a larger perspective of the situation. There, in point, making their stance, their platform, weaker for them to stand on. If you know the complete facts of the entire situation, then they can't push what they believe or want you to believe. On top of that, if they do push a non-biased sort of viewpoint of what's going on here, then it's going to turn off the people who are there to hear only what they're interested in hearing, and it'll also turn people who are open to these other ideas to go, well, well this isn't the be all end all, maybe I'll check out other avenues. Point being, it gives you a larger perspective of the PC gaming community. Most of the people who are gaming can't afford bigger rigs because they're in countries that, where a lot of the components are expensive, but not as expensive as a console. It's cheaper to buy, as I said before, a GTX 760 for two or $300 and put it in your PC that you already have versus trying to buy an Xbox One for thousand dollars. Imagination for lies, sugarcoating, and bragging. Steam gathers this information by detecting hardware and performance. One of the biggest arguments from PC gamers once they are challenged by a filthy console like the Xbox One X is, I've been gaming at 4K60 for years. When you hear this, this is a lie. PC gamers rarely bother with 4K. So he basically says that only a few people bother to participate in the Steam survey. But for those that do, there's no room for lies and blah, blah, blah. And it gives you a realistic look into the PC gaming community. Well, then you just kind of omitted that not everybody bothers to do the survey. But then you kind of make the people who did bother the barometer for which all of this is built upon. On top of that, the Steam survey in and of itself is ridiculous. Because the Steam survey actually went on my second rig, the second PC that's in my house which at the time had a R7-370 in it. And so I did the Steam survey, I didn't give a shit, but I was just kind of like, okay, well, I better do a Steam survey on my main rig because that's the computer I actually use. The Steam survey didn't pop up that time and I thought I found it fucking odd as hell, which is weird it would pop up on the cheap computer but not the expensive computer. Oh, you said expensive, you dirty rat. On top of that, I've already done a video of this comparing the R7-370 and that cheap ass graphics card was on par with an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4. I don't know if it was up there for PlayStation 4 Pro. I, I can't remember if I did that, but I'm just gonna stick with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, a cheap, weak GPU. Also, when I was able to do a Steam survey months and months ago, like before it recently updated because I did some changes to my computer and I wanted that to be accounted for, I noticed the Steam survey didn't take into account the fact that I had two monitors. It only read my main monitor, which is the 1080p, 144 hertz, Asus, whatever the fuck gaming monitor, I can't remember. And I was like, well, how come the Steam survey doesn't pick up on my 4K monitor? I don't think it 
like accounts for people with multi G like multi monitor setups. Now we read your hardware and the one monitor you motherfucking got. So in that case, yes, I use a 1080p monitor for uh, first person shooters and Fallout because I've got so many mods. I could not get 4K 60 on that bitch. I put my fucking modded Fallout on a 4K monitor. I'm running at 17 FPS. But in other games such as Doom, so on, etc., and their single player experiences where I don't need super fast refresh rates, where I could live with 50 frames or 45, I put on my 4K monitor for the games that allow me to use multi monitor setups. So once again, Steam doesn't account for this. It's not the be all end all for the barometer. I don't think Jay's Two Cents gives a fuck to fill out a Steam survey. If anybody's jumping on a fucking, like, uh, forum to write, I've been gaming at 4K 60fps for years. They're probably either A trolling or B a douchebag. The world's full of them. Who cares? Maybe they're trying to stress the point that 4K 60fps has been a thing on PC for years. Maybe that's what they said and you read it wrong. Who the hell knows? There could be any innumerable number of inconsistencies in either story. With a 1440p high refresh monitor, about $300, there is no justification to bother with 4K. In order to game at 4K, which hasn't been feasible recently unless spending $1,000 to $1,500, 4K power comes from a couple of mainstream cards like the RX 580 and the GTX 1080. You know what? I can't let this slide. I was going to try and ignore it, but I can't. Right here, you saw this little cute little thing he did <laughs> where he puts together a PC right here on this fucking thing here. Uh, the mobile price, that ain't bad, it's around right, but it's for a mini ITX, obviously. You can get a full mobile for an AM3 Plus for around $80, a full ATX. So, okay, let's just skip that one there. Uh, the CPU, $163, that's out of date. An FX3220 8-core CPU that would piss all over an Xbox One is $94.00 in a shell shocker deal right now on new egg as of today with a one terabyte hard drive and a disk drive so that is way off the ram seems about right the hard drive we've already taken care of that because it's in a shell shocker deal it's fucking free with the fx if you get one now the psu a little on the cheap side you actually spend a little bit more for that gpu 245 uh, ain't too bad but you could get cheaper if you bought a used gpu Hell, you can get two 970s, SLI them, and have a way better experience. You'd have 1070 performance or 980 Ti performance. Fucking 970s are going for like $100 on Reddit and whatnot, dude. The net, $13. If his internet's $13, that's a great price. But how are you going to like... Paying for the internet's a fucking given. So how do you put that into the equation? Like for real, dude? This is one of your platforms you're standing on, but I guess when you're trying to defend a console and you're paying like $60 a year or $9 a month, whatever the fuck you decide to pay these assholes to play on their platform, I guess you gotta have something to try and get back at uh, PC gamers. Uh, 4K Blu-ray drive, $227. This is what you're gonna find is gonna be one of his platforms he stands on all the time. Because he's gonna go, hey, hey, it comes with a 4K Blu-ray drive so you gotta get one of your PC. No, you don't have to. That's the beauty of PC. The whole point of PC is it's your personal computer. It is built around what you want it to be. It is styled how you want it to be. You want LEDs, you want colors, you got a color scheme. It's all fucking yours, you build it in there. Whereas to a console, here you go. It comes in black, maybe white later on for a special edition cocksucker. Here you fucking go. You want it to look different or customized for you? Well, you better A, Pay some asshole to custom paint it. B, paint it yourself, but be careful. You could fuck up the plastic of the Xbox or PlayStation with the wrong type of paint because it would eat through it. Or C, get yourself some vinyls and get creative. The little stickers, baby. The case is all right priced. The OS is a little overpriced. You can go on Kingwin right now and get like fucking Windows 10 for like $20, $30 a key for it. And before anyone tries to jump down my throat about Kingwin, they go after motherfucking Paul's hardware because he's the one that told me. How you like that? The build is mispriced. For $1,000, you could have a slightly better build with an 8-core processor, because I did it on Newegg, with a 1080 motherfucking Ti for around the same price, actually $1,080. So this is wrong right here. Do not be misled by this. This is false information. Fake news!
fake news. Like the RX 580 and the GTX 1080. Although the 1070 can get the job done in a lot of games. Before I get started on the numbers in the Steam survey, let's remember that this is only a small amount of PC gamers who chose to do the survey, but it actually reflects the rest of the PC gamers. Okay, what type of logic is that? Only a small amount of PC gamers bothered to do the survey, but it reflects the PC gaming community as a whole. So if your uncle's a Nazi bastard and a Ku Klux Klan member, I guess the rest of the family is also racist. It reflects the family as a whole. <laughs> Come on now, logic. Damn you, Uncle Jesse. According to the Steam survey, out of 125 million PC gamers on Steam, only 0.86% of PC gamers are gaming at 4K. Now let's compare that to the percentage of PC gamers gaming at 1080p. 61 million gamers. Only 2.8% or 3.5 million PC gamers are gaming at 1440p or otherwise known as 2K. Why? Why are over half of all PC gamers playing at 1080p or lower? Why are Sony PC gamers at 1080p? Well, odds are, if you looked at your own chart that you've been staring at like a goddamn owl, checking out a delicious little mouse, unwittingly nibbling on a bit of grain, the fact that it shows a whopping 20% of people are using Intel's integrated graphics tells me that a large portion of people that are PC gaming on Steam that bother to do the survey are odds are probably on a laptop. They probably aren't hardcore gamers. Well, a lot of gaming laptops have slightly smaller than 1920 by 1080 p screens. And the rest just don't have gaming dedicated setups. This means that there are roughly 4 million hardcore PC gamers with hardware capable of hitting 2K and above graphics on big AAA games. Your whole platform right now reeks of just trying to push a narrative that is nothing short of transparent. My God, I've seen clear water with more density than your argument here. And, as the, and the longer I sit checking out, the more I become perturbed by it. What is the point of this, other than to stroke some egos? By the end of 2017, there will be more than 10 million PS4 Pros and Xbox One Xs in gamers' homes. Why is there so much emphasis on this? You're also pushing the whole thing that the four, like the Xbox is native 4K. How many motherfuckers are gonna buy the Xbox One X and not have a 4K monitor or television, dude? Get with it. You're sitting here trying to paint this as soon as Xbox hits, it's gonna sell 10 million copies. It'll be 10 million gamers playing 4K. Do you know how many people have PlayStation 4 Pro and don't have a 4K television? Your whole argument is pointless. You're standing on a stack of a house of cards pretending it's some sort of goddamn monument of great journalism. Good lord, sir, you should be ashamed of yourself. The other reason why only 2.8% are playing at PS4 Pro resolutions and less than 1% at Xbox One X resolutions is that most PC gamers just don't have the hardware that far exceeds what is in the newest consoles. So he shows a graph here. Four cores seems to be the standard with the majority proportion using two cores. Yes, four cores have been the standard for computers for a long time now. But thanks to Ryzen, uh, it looks like the CPU market is finally getting the shakeup it long needs and deserves. But nonetheless, let's uh, break it down. So he's pointing out the dual core. He just grabbed a Pentium 2 dual core. Odds are most of the dual cores are probably like i3s. I'll tell you right now, an i3-4130, a dual core, is just as fast if not faster than 8-core CPU in the Xbox One, and the 8-core CPU in the Xbox One X is the same Jaguar 8-core CPU, just overclocked. So if you have an Intel i3 or whatever, a nice little overclock, you're right there. Because let's face it, the difference between Skylake, Cabby Lake, and Broadwell are just so minute, it's not even funny. Quad-core. This is fucking stupid. Like, why would you even bother saying a quad-core? And he purposely picks for like, a core 2 quad. It's like a $6 CPU or something. Most CPUs right now in the wild are four cores. 
most four cores are Intel, usually. If you had to choose between an Intel or the FX series four cores, you'd go with that. Um, this is pointless because any four core from Intel right now in the last three generations destroys an Xbox One X eight core CPU. So once again, I don't even see the point here. And any CPUs that are any lesser performance are probably in third world countries, you know. So once again, we're now looking at a, I don't even want to reiterate the same shit over and over again. Keep in mind that PC gamers can do so much more with their hardware than a console, but this is hardly grounds for bragging rights when comparing price to performance. Yeah, a PC can do so much more than a console, but this is hardly grounds for bragging rights. Yeah, I guess Donald Trump being born rich and was able to do a lot more of his life and money than me led to his presidency, but that's that's that, that's not grounds for braggy rights, dude. I mean, really. I mean, you can only surf the internet. You can play video games for free on the internet. You can talk to any one of your friends you want at the same time. You can use Skype, TeamSpeak, and Discord and have like four fucking different conversations at once. Hey, it's not grounds for bragging rights, you fucking asshole. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit, you PC elitist. I mean, hell, if Rockstar wasn't being douchebags, and as I said before, modding, you were about to have GTA 4 ported to the fucking GTA 5 engine, but Rockstar put the kill on it. That's not grounds for bragging rights. Or the fact that you could take GTA 5 and mod it. And yeah, actually, I play GTA 5 modded at 1080p because I have so many mods on it that I can only get about 34 FPS, and it feels like it kills me to play like that. But the game looks so beautiful and realistic. It's, it's, it's a great trade-off. Who gives a fuck, right? Not bragging rights. No, don't don't talk about mods. That your mods are free. That you can have whatever mod you want. Whereas to on Xbox, uh, you'll never see a boob mod unless someone steals it. Now, before I get into an all stops at 4K rant, let me remind you that my preference is at 1080p or 1440p at 60 FPS. The GTX 1060 is the most popular GPU in gaming rigs that are running today's AAA powerhouse games. Unfortunately, the 1060 is rated as a 1080p card that runs almost any game at 60 FPS, something the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro can't do. As great as this card is, it does not compete with the Xbox One X in VRAM. Digital Foundry could only get this card to 4K with checkerboarding and overclocking. So apparently the 1060 can't do 4K without checkerboarding and overclocking. But with a little bit of Google searching or running around YouTube, I found a couple videos, the 1060 doing pretty well on well-optimized games. Which leads me to believe that this is pushing a bit of misinformation. On top of that, do we have to really go back into the fact that a lot of the third-party games are using checkerboard rendering for the Xbox One X? Well, here's the thing. The RX 580 is in the Xbox One X, whatever it's called, Scorpio. The RX 580 is a modified version that's in the Scorpio. It's slightly higher as far as they have a couple more stream processors, etc. A little extra oomph in the trunk. But in the long run, since this is the case, from a technological standpoint, the RX 580 is still running around the 1060. These two cards are in a similar place. Also, he talks about the Xbox One X having more VRAM. Yeah, it's true, it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but that's shared with the OS. So technically, it's more like you're running with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Once again, you're back in the RX 580 territory. And the RX 580 trades blows with the 1060 in a number of games. I mean, there's no getting around it. So if the Xbox One X were to run, well, actually The Witcher isn't even gonna be supported for the Xbox One X. CD Projekt Red has other shit to do, i.e. make the next best RPG that they're working on. In my personal opinion, Cyberpunk 2077 sounds pretty legit. Here's someone's benchmark for Grand Theft Auto V. And like I said before earlier, I might have, I can't remember. Grand Theft Auto V is probably one of the best optimized games for PC. I wish more 
developers put this much energy into their ports. That way you'd have something respectable. Now, he said that the 1060 couldn't do 4K. In this video, it clearly shows the 1060 doing 4K pretty well. And he also said that the 1070 was geared for 1440p. The 1070 is doing 4K for GTA 5 at damn near 80 frames per second. And the 1080 4K 90 frames per second. So really, I guess the whole idea that the 1060 and the 1070 couldn't really handle 4K like the Xbox One seemed a bit misinformed. The next most popular card is the GTX 1070 with 3.6% of PC gamers using it. A $470 card. This card is the closest in power to the Xbox One X. Although this card is rated for 1440p60 on most games, it isn't built for native 4K like the Xbox One X. What? The GTX 1080 is adopted by 1.73% of the gaming community, with the RX 480 at 1% of those surveyed. This means that the number of PC gamers with hardware up to Xbox One X snuff is about 8 million of the 125 million PC gamers. But contrast that with the 10 to 15 million PS4 and Xbox gamers that are actually hardcore enough to care about graphics. That 10 to 15 million is based on the number of PS4 Pros sold and the estimated Xbox One X's to be sold, even without any native 4K games, even if all of them were checkerboarded. So only the most hardcore Xbox and PlayStation 4 Pro fans care about graphics. If you go to any sort of graphical comparison on Digital Foundry, GameSpot, IGN, etc. that does the graphical comparisons between Xbox and PlayStation 4s, Graphics seem to be all that those console gamers give a fuck about. And with the way the AAA industry is going, its main focus is on visual fidelity. Not so much about story. So, you know, I think that, you know, all you console gamers really care about graphics. Let's cut the shit here. The hardcore PlayStation fan and the hardcore Xbox fan, odds are bought their consoles at launch at full retail price. So the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro are $399 respectively, with tax comes out to $863.83. That's enough money to buy yourself a pretty beefy ass fucking PC. I mean, a year of PlayStation Online from the time that PlayStation launched till now runs you $230 that you spent to play online while it was free on PC. Altogether, your PlayStation experience for the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro with the years of online without any games or peripherals is $1,102.83. The Xbox fans, and we all know the guys who stood outside in line to get those things, and kids. So the first Xbox One was $499, came out on November 13th. The Xbox Scorpio, or Xbox One X, whatever the hell they want to call it, I can't remember verbatim, is also $499. It's coming out in November. Put those together with tax, $1,080.35. Once again, this is enough money to have an 8320 8-core CPU that destroys the Scorpio CPU with a 1080 Ti. Is priced at this. Point being, if you bought the console at launch and then you later upgraded, you still paid as much as a fucking PC gamer for a really high-end rig. And most PC gamers don't pay for really high-end rigs. The beauty of PC is you can find either A, used parts, or stuff like those two cores, or the four core Intel CPUs that still outperform the Xbox Scorpio, except for the two cores, they're on par. All right, really. So once again, with the right sort of stuff and the right part picking, you could build a PC that can kill an Xbox One X. And don't even bother talking to me about Blu-ray fucking drive. Who gives a shit? Cut the crap. How many people really care about Blu-ray drives in this day and age that are real hardcore gamers when most of us who are on PC are already doing digital media. It's fast, it's easy, you don't have to go to GameStop and have some guy be forced to lie to you about shit to get you to pre-order something and then try and sell you a used game. Come on now. So the hardcore gamers 
have already paid just as much for a really high-end PC. The only difference is they paid it in a four-year time span. The thing that turns people off to PC is like you're paying for everything up front, you know? It's kind of like buying a car up front. It seems like it's really costly, which it would be. But in the long run, if you take out a loan and you're dealing with the APR and so on and so forth, by the time you actually pay off the car, you paid more for the car than it would have been worth if you paid outright. You're gonna pay. Just when you pay all depends on you. Currently, there are 65 native 4K titles on the Xbox One X and 22 on the PS4 Pro. Let's see what this monster can do. Exclusive world premiere. Minecraft in 4K. When the Minecraft team showed me the first version of the game in 4K, I was blown away. There's no power greater than X. The most powerful console ever made. The most powerful console ever. Okay. And coming for Xbox One X launch in November. Correct. Uh, so tell us a bit about how you're taking advantage of the, the six teraflops of power. Will we get 60 frames on One X? It'll be 30 frames. 30 frames. Okay, so yep. 30 frames across all the systems. You know, technically it was really incredible. So was that running on a PC or what was it running on? Uh, so, so this is actually representative of, of what it will be like on Xbox One X. Um, okay. And I mean, so same the, G yeah. GPU and sort of. Yeah, I mean, like so. So on a dev kit or is this a PC that? Uh, uh, it 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 was captured on a PC of the same right. kind, of, uh, spec. kind of spec. Of course, not every game on the Xbox One X will be native 4K. Just like not every GTX 1080 or RX 580 PC gamer will be running their games in 4K. But these new consoles are finally competing with hardcore PC gamers and their graphics. What we have here with the modern consoles is late catch up. In a sense, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One X are now mid-range. They're mid-range PC competitors. They are not competing on the same level as the hardcore PC gamer. And the thing that's weird about this is one minute he's talking about the PC gamers that have low-end specs. And then he's talking about the mid-range. Then he's after the hardcore PC gamer. Here's a perfect point. The hardcore PC gamer, the Xbox One X can't touch. My rig can't touch. Those guys can play games at 8 fucking K. The Witcher in 8 fucking K, dude. GTA 5 and 8K, those are the hardcore guys. The consoles are never gonna be there. Most of us PC gamers aren't gonna be there. So once again, the point you're trying to make makes no sense. Had you said the console makers had finally created systems that are at least mid-range level of PC experience, they now enable us to reach 4K in some games. Native 4K in indie dev games isn't something to tout about because indie dev games are really going in this like 8-bit genre sort of thing and I don't hate it. I actually love it. But let's be real. The fact they're showing off 4K Minecraft, I mean, really, it's Minecraft, dude. I don't see that as being too stressful to put in 4K. Like, for real. The console manufacturers are playing catch-up. They are in dire straits. They're trying to make sure people have a reason to stick around because PC gaming has become a bit bigger. It has become more prominent and more prevalent. Have you not noticed that all the esports are held on PCs? Why? Because, well, let's just be real, the consoles don't cut it. All right, and so far, every third party 4K game for the Xbox One X that was promised to come is currently at 30 FPS. Most of them are using checkerboard rendering. It's a false 4K. Yeah, it gives you a 4K feel, but it's not real. It's kind of like having jewelry that's gold-plated, you know, versus someone that actually has a real gold necklace that's solid gold, and you're running around showing off your gold-plated shit, talking shit. This is just as good as yours, dude. No, it isn't. 
because that asshole could melt his gold down at cashforgold.com, who's sponsoring this video, by the way. If you ever need money for your smack, go to cashforgold.com and talk to Ron. Tell him Gundam sent you. The only reason why I'm bothering to say anything is because this video puts forth a lot of misinformation, and that's where the issue is. Because when you, with this sort of stuff, People then watch the video, they listen to it, they have their beliefs and ideas reaffirmed, and then they turn around and share it in places to tell other people that either A, don't know any better, or B, to try and pass a point, because they themselves don't know any better. And it creates a larger group of people who are not 100% correct on their information, who believe it's the God's truth, gospel truth, whatever the hell that phrase is, because a YouTube video that was well edited said so. So it must be true, and I really like Xbox better than PlayStation, and I can't afford a gaming PC, and PC gamers are full of cheaters and hackers anyway, so I don't want to play with them because they're garbage. And what I think is awesome is right and everything else is wrong, and this video makes me feel good about those beliefs I have, when in all actuality, it's wrong. When you're touting that this is a true 4K system and it's not, it's wrong. It then misleads people and they run around repeating this like parrots. Remember, the book Darian Gray, take some time to read it if you will there's a monologue by lord henry that i've always taken to heart and it basically comes down to all influence is immoral because most people repeat phrases and ideas that are not their own they are playing parts that were not written for them in a sense they take on another man's essence and soul and if that is too deep for you then i'm fucking sorry read a book you son of a bitch Dynamic resolution scaling isn't 4K. It's a false 4K. Sure, you have 4K in one area, but then you have 1440p upscaled to 4K over here because there's just too much going on and the console can't handle it. That's not really 4K. That's kind of like buying a sandwich and only a quarter of it's actually chicken. I live in America. I'm used to it, you dumbass. And PC elitists are clearly not happy about it. You won't see a PC elitist ridiculing Nintendo, because Nintendo doesn't encroach on their territory. A mobile gaming system with cheerful, family-oriented games doesn't threaten the hundreds of dollars PC gamers have invested in getting high-end graphics. Okay, do you know why PC gamers don't really care about Nintendo? Well, actually, a lot of us did point out that the Nintendo Switch is basically a glorified Nvidia shield, and a few Nintendo fans got pissed. Other PC gamers pointed out that the Nintendo Switch also ripped off a design that Razer came up with about two or three years ago. Nintendo fans got a little pissed, but they didn't give enough of a fuck to do anything about it. The simple thing is Nintendo fans don't really come into other areas to spout shit. You know, you never see Nintendo fans talking about Zelda and then a non sequitur about PC gaming comes in. Fucking PC gamers, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I, I just didn't. It's because Nintendo people mind their business. They don't start any shit. You know, you don't start no shit, there won't be no shit. Nintendo is like the guy, or Nintendo fans are like the guy at the end of the bar. He's having a drink. He's minding his business. He's going on with this whole thing. He might say something. You look over there and go, ah, that's a joke. But Xbox fans, the dude bros, are the type of guys who would walk past you, bump into you, and spill their own beer on their chest, and then start yelling in your fucking face and then you have to put them in their place. Then it just turns into this whole snowball effect of bullshit. Because frankly, all the people arguing on the internet over this crap are assholes anyway. All right, anyone who's got a real life, anyone who's got anything really going the fuck on isn't on the internet arguing over PlayStation, Sony ponies, Xbox, and Vidtards, AMD retards, etc. Fuck this. If you got a life, you're not fighting no. Unfortunately, I had some <laughs> I had someone contact me on Twitter with this. And the more I watched it, the more I kind of got tilted. I, I Originally, the video was very mellow, but then I got tilted because it's so full of crap. It's so full of stuff that baits people to get upset. And I'm a man who's easily baited because my dick is small and I got a chip on my shoulder the size of Yankee Stadium. Oh, point being, Nintendo people pretty much leave you the fuck alone. But long story short, do I give a fuck about Nintendo? No. Do I think Nintendo sucks? Hell yeah. Fuck Nintendo. Fucking... Nintendo has blocked some of my videos because I just talked about Nintendo. Fuck Nintendo. That's why I don't buy any of their shit. Also, when you pop off saying that the 1060 is geared only towards 1080p, the 1070 is geared only to 1440p, but the Xbox One X is a true native 4K gaming machine, that's when a PC gamer takes issue. Because sometimes we feel like we have to educate 
very pro console people because for some reason they're like children. You know, you need to come over to that little console game here and go, no, no, stop eating the paint chips, Tommy. It's bad for you. But Uncle Phil Sensor said that there was DX12 in these paint chips. Num, 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 num. You gotta stop him because he isn't thinking straight. All right? <laughs> Fuck. Xbox One X's native 4K system. And we're trying to tell you, it actually has a modified AMD 580. Any way you jerk your dick, it ain't gonna make it longer. All right? It's not gonna, the 580 inside of a, an Xbox One X is not gonna magically become a 1070 equivalent. It's just not. That's what we're trying to tell you. They're manipulating you so you're hyped to believe in this shit and you'll go out and buy it. They're manipulating you so you're so hyped you'll tell other people it's great for the market and they'll go buy it up. And in the long run, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the Xbox and PlayStation fans have an inferior experience to PC but can't fucking admit it. So they do nothing but fight with us over stupid ass shit like this. And then we gotta come back because frankly, let's face it, it's America, I and I. With the Xbox One X and even the PS4 Pro, consoles finally have the hardware to give you PC quality graphics. Visuals you won't see in a $500 PC. I want to close this video with a preaching rant that I gave in the Xbox Nation podcast. You'll hear emotion that is built up from enduring wild claims from PC gamers for over two years. Nigel, roll the tape. <laughs> okay, so I did that video. Can you build a gaming PC that'll do what the Xbox One X will do for $499, okay? And I got drones of comments from these PC elitists scared out of their little uh, NVIDIA pants about how this Xbox One X was going to try and do 4K gaming. They gave me parts list at $500, $550, $482, claiming that that PC would do 4K uh, 30, some 4K 60, that it would support VR, and they told me, you don't need the, the you don't need the, the Blu-ray player. Get that out of here. I'm like, <laughs> look, it's a feature on the Xbox One X. So if you don't pick the one that I put in the parts list, you gotta go buy a shelf one for 300 bucks. So get out of here with that crap. Well, that look. build came out to a thousand bucks with the Blu-ray player. If you took the Blu-ray player out, that build was 750 bucks. PC gamers are liars, and I'm getting sick of it because just yesterday, PC Gamer, I need the... <laughs> 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 the <stroking> out <laughs> <in> the background. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just yesterday, PC Gamer put out an article saying, how can we build the cheapest gaming PC that'll do... At this point, I then had enough listening to his rant on the Xbox Nation. All right, for those of you who don't know, Xbox Nation is a very 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 pro xbox group of people all right they're pro xbox like fox news is pro trump all right they're pro xbox like the mary sue is super pro fucking feminist like polygon is pro uh anita sarkeesian to go here is now to essentially it, it ruins all the validity i gave him the benefit of the doubt but the second i started seeing the likes of crap gamer and his ilk in that podcast i was out because this is the same guy who, I don't even need to bother showing you XR uh, Pro, oh my God. Fucking, oh my God. I'm done, actually. There's no point in this. Because to even go any further is a waste of my time, energy, and what's left of my cognitive ability to formulate at least a decent sentence or a coherent thought. To delve any deeper would rob me mentally and spiritually of any energy I have for life. And ADP. 30 or 60 FPS. They didn't effing say 4K. They didn't say anything about 4K wow. 40. They built this PC and they said the cheapest we can get it without peripherals, which I don't ever count when I do these parts lists, the cheapest they could get it was 500 bucks. And here for a month, I had these lying PC gamers <laughs> telling me that you could build a 4K VR supported Blu-ray plane. <laughs> PC oh. mother <laughs> let's end it on this uh he shows some bill for 700 he talks about a bill for 750 dollars plus the blu-ray player that is apparently so expensive it turns it into three a hundred is the blu-ray player is so expensive it turns a 750 dollar bill to over a thousand dollar bill why do you need a blu-ray player at all and if you get a blu-ray player for the pc you do realize that it can burn 
discs as well. Another point that PC gamers don't really give a shit about Blu-ray players right now, especially ones from Pioneer and so on and so forth, is because they have proprietary shit in there that they don't really allow you to burn like movies to the Blu-ray. You can, but then the Blu-ray player you have that burnt the movie won't play it. What the fuck is this shit? You know? And why are you so worried about VR with your Xbox One X? Because, you know, the HTC Vive, or Vine, whatever the fuck it's called, and the Oculus Rift are still pretty pricey. I think the Rift is, what, five or $600, and the Vive is $800? So why are you worried about this? If PC gaming is so expensive, why do you need an extra $500 to an $800 peripheral? And on top of that, if you check out recent stuff with the Xbox One box art, you see that they took away the VR supported line. And at this point, I had enough. I have a headache. I spend too much time and energy on this. I'm going to drink some brisk iced tea who also sponsored this video. When you need to quench your thirst, don't be afraid to briskly walk through life. Delicious. Oh, that's right. Uh, I forgot. Rate, comment, subscribe, you so choose. If not, who cares? Fuck it. Really, fuck this. This feels like I wasted a part of my life. I should go do something more productive. Never again. I leave this to rags.